Hello gentlemen, welcome to our video on section 3.5. Now in section 3.3 we learn how to calculate or to determine the percent composition based on an empirical or molecular formula. In section 3.5 we're going to do the opposite. We're going to determine an empirical formula and then a molecular formula from analysis, aka our percent composition information that's given to us in a certain problem or through mass spectrometer or mass spectroscopy data. Now, let's review what an empirical formula is. So empirical formulas tell us the relative numbers of atoms of each element in a substance. For example, H2O is an empirical formula. tells me I have two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom. I can also read it this way. If I have one mole of H2O, I have two moles of hydrogen atoms and one mole of oxygen atoms. Now here's an example to get us into how we can determine an empirical formula from analysis. Our example reads, mercury and chlorine combine to form a compound that is 73.9% mercury and 26.1% chlorine by mass. That is the percent composition. Thus, if we had a 100 gram sample of this compound, it would contain 73.9 grams mercury excuse me, and 26.1 grams chlorine if we have a 100 gram sample that's really important to assume that. From this information we can find the empirical formula of this substance. What we have to use is the molar mass which is basically like the formula weight just different units of grams for every one mole of that substance. And we use information above given to us here assuming our 100 gram sample. We want to find the number of moles of each substance. Remember this as we go through the stoichiometry chapter, that everything must go through moles. Moles is the middleman of pretty much every problem that we're going to face. But let's do this one. So I first start out with using my masses of my substances. If I assume a 100 gram sample, then if I have 50% of one substance, then that's going to be 50 grams. Likewise, if I have 73.9% of mercury, in my compound, then in a 100 gram sample, I'm going to have 73.9 grams of mercury. I want to figure out how many moles of mercury I have in that sample, so I use the molar mass to convert between grams and moles. The molar mass of mercury is 200.59 grams per one mole. Now I found this using the periodic table. The average atomic mass of mercury is the molar mass of mercury, which is the formula weight or molecular weight of mercury. And well, all those terms are pretty much synonymous at this point. If I do this mathematics, I get 0 0.368 moles of mercury. I do the same for chlorine. In a 26.1 gram sample of chlorine, I multiply here times this conversion factor, which is the molar mass. This is 35.453 grams of chlorine. This is the average atomic mass of a chlorine atom or the mass of one mole of chlorine. And I do this division problem, I get 0 0.735 moles of chlorine. We have that step. Our next step is to find the mole ratio. Now the mole ratio explains how these two elements relate to one another <clears throat> in, well, while combined, in the chemical, in, in the empirical formula, while they're combined as a compound. We do this by dividing by the smaller number of moles. So I take my individual number of moles, I determine which one's smaller, 0.3 smaller than 0.7, so I'm going to divide both of these by 0.368. And that's shown down here. So for mercury, the moles was 0.3. 368 moles of mercury, I divide by 0.368 moles, giving me 1. For chlorine, it was 0.735 moles. Divide that by the smallest number of moles, 0.368. That gives me 1.99. We can round that to 2. These two numbers, these represent the ratio of mercury to chlorine atoms in that empirical formula when they're combined as a compound. And we know in the empirical formula if that's our whole number ratio of atoms, those represent our subscripts as well in the chemical formula. 
So we have one mercury atom for every two chlorine atoms. And this would be the empirical formula. And it was discovered through analysis of the percent composition of this substance. Now, we just went through this problem, but there are some rules that you can jot down to help you navigate this for other problems as well, make it a little simpler for you. So rules in doing this in the future. First thing, you assume a 100 gram sample in every single problem so that your percent compositions can be directly translated into masses as we did in the original problem. Second thing, you calculate the number of moles of each element. Using the molar mass, you go from grams to moles. Third, you determine the simplest whole number ratio of moles by dividing each number of moles by the smallest number of moles as we did in our last step a moment ago. And that will give you your whole number ratios, meaning the subscripts um, for each particular element in your empirical formula. Now, oftentimes we're not trying to just find the empirical formula, we want to find the molecular formula. Because remember, the empirical formula is the simplest version of um, how those atoms are combined together. The actual substance that you're dealing with, if you were, you know, forensics, you know, analyst, could be, you know, you could be dealing with a molecular compound um, whose molecular formula is not what you found through your data. And we'll talk about that in the next class and as we go along this chapter. But we can find the molecular formula from the empirical formula. And it can be determined if we know the molecular weight. If we don't know the molecular weight, we can't do this or the molar mass, which is the same thing as molecular weight. Now, the subscripts in the molecular formula are always going to be whole number multiples of the subscripts in each empirical formula. And we've done that before in class. If I'm giving you the molecular formula and I said, well, what is the empirical formula of this molecular formula? You were easily able to reduce down to the simplest whole number ratios and give me the um, empirical formula. <clears throat> So we do something very similar here, but kind of the opposite way. So whole number multiples are determined by dividing the molecular weight by the empirical formula's weight. For example, let's say I have ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid's empirical formula is C3H4O3. The empirical formula weight, meaning the molar mass or the uh, molecular weight, formula weight of this substance, is 88.04586 AMU. I got that from the periodic table by adding up the masses of all those three elements. The molecular weight is determined experimentally. In a problem, this will be given to you in the problem. I wouldn't expect you to go in the lab and determine this uh, offhand. Um, so we have 176.12412 AMU. That's the molecular weight. Your molecular weight should always be larger than your empirical formula weight. When I have these two pieces of data, I can plug them into my new equation, and I have my molecular weight on top, 176.12412 AMUs, divided by my empirical formula weight, which is 88.04586 AMU, and it gives you approximately two. Now, we're going to have to round these numbers because we're looking at whole number multiples, right? We'll talk about when it's, you know, right in the middle. If it's like 1.5, you do something a little bit differently than you would if it were two or one or three. Most of the time it's going to give you pretty much a solid number, whole number. Once we have this, what we do with it is we apply it to our empirical formula. Our empirical formula was C3H4O3 times two. This two means that each of my subscripts is a multiple of two in the molecular formula. So we multiply all of these times two, then we get C6H6O6 and this is my molecular formula. So basically you determine how many times, trying to determine how many times does my empirical formula weight go into my molecular formula weight. And that will give you how many times your subscripts from your empirical formula go into your subscripts from your molecular formula. Gentlemen, take notes. Come prepared to work on this stuff. Adios.